Hi everyone. Okay, so in this video I will go over the continuation of equivalent values. I will put the link up so that you guys can have it if you haven't watched the other video on equivalent values. There's actually a, a couple, one on simple interest and one with regards to compound interest. Now in this video I will go over a particular example. It's a little bit more challenging example but it will really test you if you understand equivalent values or not it will be on debt and repayment okay so let's get started so you have three debt payments of one thousand dollars remaining so that's what we have so three debt payments one thousand dollars okay so each remaining now the first payment is due today the second payment is due in six months from now and then the third one is due in 12 months from now so we have these payments so today okay so second payment is in six months and then the third payment is in 12 months so that's what we have there now you do not want to wait 12 months so you don't want to be paying these payments okay so one today one in six months and one in 12 months you want to pay it off actually sooner so you negotiate a deal to pay it off in two payments instead. The first payment is supposed to be $1,500, and that is in three months from now, and then the second payment is supposed to be five months from now. Now, if time value of money is set at 2% compounded annually, then what would be the second payment? So this is a great example of trying to match whatever debt you have you're owing and then to the repayments so obviously they have to equal in some regards and that's why this is an example of equivalent values because the debt and repayments have to be equivalent now if you've watched the equivalent values videos you will know that you have to basically bring all the values to one particular date which we call the focal date in order to be able to compare values and then see if they're going to be equivalent or not. So ultimately, what we want to do is we want to be able to bring all of these to the same date. So let's get started on this example. So I have drawn a timeline for us. Now notice the payments itself. So I put them in red. So it said 1,000 due today, 1,000 in six months and 1,012 months. That's if we normally would pay off this particular debt. So we know that our debt is supposed to be equal to our actual repayments. Now we are changing those repayments. So instead of paying 1,000 of the debt, so today six months and 12 months, instead in the question it tells us that we will be paying it off at three months, so that's one of them. And then we have an unknown amount on this five month period. So now the question is, I could easily, if the interest was zero, I could just add the debt, which would be $3,000, if there was no time value of money associated with this at all. And then what I would do is I would take the 3,000, I would subtract the $1,500, and I would get 1,500 left over, which I would repay. And that's oftentimes what students and others would actually do. And they forget, and I have it highlighted here, that the idea is don't forget your time value of money. So money changes over time, and then there is an interest associated with it. Now, when you're doing these in classes, courses, or somewhere else, typically they will give you what the time value of money actually is. So in this case, it's 2% compounded annually. So we're going to be using that to try to match. Now, the next idea is, okay, so if I'm going to be comparing these things, remember, you have to pick one date. You have to move all money to one particular date whenever you have an interest. So the most convenient way would be to actually pick the five months because we don't know what that repayment on five months would be. 
So what I will do is I'm going to move all my money back into five months. So this is what I will do. So let me remove, okay, so these have to be equal. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna move this to five months. I'm going to bring this back to five months. And I'm going to bring this all the way back to five months. So that is now one focal date where all the money is being brought back. And I will also do the same with my repayment of $1,500. So if I bring them all to the same time frame, the same focal date, then I can compare, then I can add them and subtract them. And in that case, I can just simply take all my debt as I had it before, and then I can take all my repayments, so repayments that I have, and they're supposed to be equal, right? So that's what's supposed to happen. So let me label these so that we have them. So let's label this one as one, this one as two, let's say this one as three, they're all different points in time. And then this one right here, I'm gonna label four, and then the five months, I don't have to do anything with that one. I don't know that amount, but I will find out what it is, right? What it is equivalent to. All right, so what I'm gonna do now, okay, so I'm just gonna so copy this off, okay? Um, so I'm gonna actually, so let's do this. So let's take this thing out now that we have the question and we know it. And what I will do is I'm going to take this and just shift it up for us. All right, so let's shift this one up. Okay, I'll make it a little bit smaller so that it's not in our way. Okay, let's clean this up a little bit. All right, so let's do that. And now don't forget, okay, so we had to move that one over. So I have this and I'm gonna be calculating, so first off, all my debts. So here is my debt, okay, and let's calculate. So number one, notice that for this one, because I am moving it from today to five months, I am moving it forward. So if you're moving it forward, so I'm gonna be calculating the future value of that. So it is $1,000, so that's future value, so don't forget your equation. So future value is equal to your present value, one plus I to the N, okay? So that is whenever you're moving money forward. And secondly is when you have present value, which is future value, one plus I to the minus N, and that's when you are moving money back. All right, so we're gonna be needing these two equations to find this out. So I have one plus, so it was 2% compounded annually. So 2% compounded, so divided by one because it's annually. Now, okay, N in this case is, remember N is number of years because it is the number of compounding periods that we have. So in this case, it's only five months. So I have to be careful. So it's five over 12. So that's what that would be in that particular case. And now this I can find out and I can calculate exactly what this is. All right, so that would be my first one. My second one that I have, so I have now number two. So notice that for number two, I am bringing that from six months to five months. So I'm moving it one month back. So that I'm gonna use the present value formula. So it's $1,000, one plus, so our time value of money doesn't change, but our N does, because I am now moving it only one month. And now finally, my third one, so that is from 12 months, I'm gonna bring it back, okay, to five months. So I'm gonna be bringing it back seven months. So that's present value is equal to one plus 0 0.02 over one, and I am bringing it back. Okay, so here I'm gonna put the negative back in there. 
Okay, so negative, and I will have the results. All right, so now I can go ahead and calculate these. Right, so we can squish out our calculator here, and we have 1,000 multiplied by, so 1 plus 0 0.02, it's divided by 1, so it doesn't really change, okay, to the exponent, and I'll put the brackets around the exponent because it's 5 over 12, and I'm going to hit equals, all right, so this is 1,000, eight and 29 cents 29 cents that's the first one now let's calculate the second one so now i have 1000 multiplied by so 1 plus 0 0.02 to the exponent okay so now my exponent in here is negative so don't forget that and it is 1 divided by 12 so that's going to be 998.35, 998.35. And lastly, so now the seven months that is going back from 12 months to five months. So that's 1,000 multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.02. Again, it is to the exponent. It's a negative exponent, and that is 7 over 12. And that would be 988.51. 988.51. So because we are only compounding at 2%, uh, it will not make a big difference to the amounts, but you will notice okay, a slight difference. So that's what we have for our debt. All right. So now what about our repayment? Well, our repayment is $1,500, which we're going to be shifting from three months all the way to five months. So two months over. So here, now next, okay, so what we have is we need our repayment. So I'm going to so cut this off now. Okay, so here, let me okay, so delete this, okay, out, and I'm going to shift my amounts. So I've just calculated my debt there. So those, that's my debt in total. And now my repayment. So repayment. So this is, remember, this was number four. So number four. And because I am moving it into the future from three months to five months, so I'm going to use the future value formula. That's 1500 that I am moving. 1 plus 0 0.02, still divided by 1 because it's compounded annually, and it is n over, so 2 over 12, sorry for n, and now I can calculate this, what that is, and that will give me, so we have 1500 multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.02 to the power of, so I'm going to again keep it in brackets, so that's 1504.96, so that is 1504.96, and now I can find out exactly what that amount at five months would be. So remember that the repayments have to equal your debts. So here, I can add all of these up, all right, so that's my debt, so now if I add it all up, so my debt would be, so 1008.29 plus 998.35 plus 988.51, so that's my debt, so that's the total of the debt. Right now, repayments have to equal. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract one of the repayments, which is the 150496. So, I'm going to take that, subtract 1504.96, and that is how much you still have to repay. So, at five months, that's what we would have to repay still. So, this is. 
1504.96. So that's what we have there. Okay. And when we take this subtraction, we got 1490.19. And that would finish off the actual question. So it is an involved question. Okay, so and it does cover equivalent values. Now remember that we moved everything to five months, so that was our focal date, and we calculated all our debt. We moved it to that one day. We took all our repayments, moved it on that one day. Now that we have them at the same time, we can actually add and subtract them all. All right, so I hope that you found this useful. Okay, so thanks for watching. Okay, looking forward to you subscribing and maybe give it a thumbs up if you found it useful. Okay, take care everybody. Cheers.